I'd usually wear a hat. Feel weird. You want um, a hat? No. I, we got to go do headshots here in a little bit. Headshots for what? For the website Atticon. Oh, nice. Yeah. I almost but, brought a Lake Baron hat. But you know, I, you should. I, you should. Chose the formal you like, You should have shaved. Like, a stripe. Be, be, no, yeah, just like, just like, pretend like you're balding and just leave all the long. I'll sides pretend like I'm balding. It's not. <laughs> it's not gonna be hard. You like, got a pretty oh good God, mullet. Uh, yeah, he's got a solid time. mullet going on. Yeah, yeah. Justin's been bald. He's got a Costanza <laughs> style haircut the entire time. Man, dude, do you know? Do you know? Dude, everybody would be talking about that in power. If they you, would if you pulled that stunt. That you just actually, did a straight faced. Uh, and just like you've actually like been that. Costanza in it this entire time. <laughs> yeah, you just wear a hat everywhere. Everybody, nobody, they're like, Holy nobody shit, knew. No wonder he wears that hat all the time. Dude, yeah. that'd be, fuck, God, that'd be so funny. <laughs> So we should. We're putting this on there. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. This is our intro. Do. Um, We're here what? with Sean Farrell. Well, I mean, I cut a mullet in high school one time, and I got yeah? three haircuts that wouldn't go away. <laughs> it was like just uh, massive muff in the back of my head. Every time I kept on getting haircuts, it just wouldn't. It I mean, you'd there. fit in. That would have been perfect nowadays. Yeah. You know? My grandpa said I looked like an owl peeping through a brush heap when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> that was his description a very of, descriptive yeah, uh, analogy because i had long curly hair and it was just like a, it was like a helmet you could just like <laughs> stick it on and it like went down to my shoulders oh man yeah I, dude I, you should bring that back because you're silicone valley doppelganger you yeah dude so that thing i put on linkedin the other day it was yeah. like the cowboy to, uh, to get to do that i said make me a more handsome version of the actor tj miller since he's like in the public domain and then i spit that is that out. how you came yeah up that's with how it? i came up oh, with it right, looking like right, me. i kind of right. want to see this picture yeah, yeah we dude. we we need to show him that picture yeah pull that one up but sean okay yeah so um while he's getting that terror wolf um what's your role over there and kind of tell us about it everybody i mean I don't know. I guess I say everybody. Most people who listen probably are Bitcoin folks. I'm a, I'm actually a big fan of your guys' company. I think what you guys do is pretty cool, and um, I think it's exciting, and I think it's a good case for nuclear. But I'll let you guys kind of talk. You talk about that, but yeah, and it's a cool name. Terrible. Terrible is awesome name. Yeah, that's a. You should definitely blow that up. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get this. This this that. might be my new profile. That could be a good tank great. top. Yeah, man. Sleeveless yeah. tank top. That's solid, man. I thought about actually dressing like this for Empower. You should. And we could have it pulled up on stage while you talk. Yeah, but you know, you know how much expensive cowboy boots are these days? Yeah, they're pretty expensive. Try to buy some new ones. Just Inflation. go to Ariat. Ariat's like sub 200 bucks. Yeah, that's what I have now. They're so uncomfortable. Oh, I, I get a new God. pair of Ariat's every five yeah. years. Do you really? Most comfortable pair of boots I own. <laughs> Maybe I get the wrong ones. Yeah. I mean, the Tony Llamas are nice. Yeah. I got some Anderson beans, which are good. But the Ariat's are nice. And he's in Colorado. So, oh, you're in Colorado? Yeah. For some reason, I was thinking you were somewhere else. I'm from Georgia originally, but I've been out in Colorado. I went to school out there uh, 2005, 2010. Mm. Did the victory lap five years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I was working for Siemens and I was kind of all over the place and back out there in 2012. What school were you at? University of Colorado Boulder. Oh, okay, so they played yesterday. They played well. Wait, is that is that the Buffaloes or not? Yeah. Buffaloes. Shit. And we came back, we were down like 11 points yeah. most of the game. Yeah. And we yeah. came back, and then we're missing the threes there at the yeah. end of the second half. It was a good game. It was, that was a good tough game. That city is blowing up. It's crazy. Oh, that's it's a great prime time. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, it is a great city. It's a lot of fun, but, um, and it's cool college town, you know. Is it, is it, so I grew up in a college town. Is it like, is it so different than, than Denver? Or is it, oh, older in Denver is drastically okay. different. The homeless person situation is probably the biggest one, huh? Yeah, it's a little more, I'd say, liberal. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, it's a beautiful town. It's right there at the foothills of the mountain. Yep. A little more? <laughs> Maybe a lot more. So Boulder is actually trying to break away from Excel Energy. So they're trying to do a full decarbonized really? grid. And right now, Excel is their servicing load. And they've been talking about breaking away, doing their own municipality, and going mm -hmm. all off renewables for, don't quote me on this, but I want to say at least a decade. Wow. Jeez. Is that, that feasible out there? I don't think it's feasible. It's feasible. Anywhere. It'd be very expensive for a yeah. power cost. But yeah. yeah, you can definitely do it. It's yeah. a lot of battery storage, wind, solar. You can do anything with enough pump money. Pump hydro. I with just enough money, you can do anything. You're I right. just can't imagine people wanting that after they get it and then looking at their bill every month. It's yeah. going to be costly. Very. It's an expensive place to live. And also for games last year, it was yeah. a couple years ago. You can get a ticket under like 50 bucks to go to a football game. For the Nebraska game, it was almost five hundred bucks a ticket. Are you Face serious? To yeah. go to see you, Nebraska. That's the nice. on effect. Huh? So it I, worked. I, I grew up in College Station, so we have the Aggies. The Aggies were just kind of like, eh. Yeah. And then I, you know, I graduated high school and went off. And then a few years later, Johnny Football comes along. They go mm -hmm. to the SEC. Totally 
changed the entire town. Oh yeah, yeah. That was it a- is like it's not a small college town anymore. It is a it's huge, huge college town. I always felt like that was a good move because it was like they had a little brother syndrome issue with, with UT. like UT, yeah. and it was a way to kind of get away from that. It was probably a good move. It was I a did good not way to like rebrand Missouri's themselves. move to the SEC. Still don't like that move, mm. but they should stay in the Big Twelve. Be playing Kansas every year would be way cooler. I hate it. I miss it. But that was a great. I wonder what the total addressable market of people who watch sports and also do Bitcoin mining is. It's getting, it's we're pretty getting high. we're, we're it's niching pretty down high. pretty. <laughs> and it's an NCAA tournament right now. Texas A and M played a great game yesterday too. It's they Cougars. Lost. Yeah, that was a good game. That was a really good game. Is it double overtime or single overtime? I, can't I don't remember. know. I only know about this from Instagram. No. Oh, yeah, I watched. I watched it, but. I was also doing some work at the same time. You're also a former basketball coach too. So. Yes. Who'd yeah. you coach for? Uh, I coached at Westbury Christian. Okay. Um, coached with Charlie Ward. He was he was over there with us. He's a Georgia guy. Yeah. Um, Moochie Norris was over there. We had, yeah, we had some Moochie. What a name. T Mac used to come work out of the school sometimes. It was awesome. We had uh, Indy Eby. He went. He got drafted like he was first round NBA straight out of, straight out of our school. Same year LeBron went. Um, kind of fizzled out pretty quick but dude was 611 he shoot the three he was like number two player in the country behind lebron talked some mess to lebron during the mcdonald's game that was probably not the greatest idea but that yeah, was it was pretty cool but i'm sorry <laughs> yeah, we're getting all distracted. yeah yes yeah i'd say it is 2020 but yeah so tell us about yourself and kind of the terrible story and mm-hmm. yeah we'll just kind of go from there yeah so because yeah, Sean Farrell, um, run operations, development, and construction for Terra Wolf. Uh, joined in 2022, which was probably not the best time to be joining yeah. the Bitcoin market. Yeah. So was that of, your first jump into Bitcoin? Oh yeah, I was, I was with Siemens and Siemens Gamesa for 13 and a half years. Mm. So when I was with Siemens, I was in different parts of the energy chain. So anywhere from oil and gas, transmission, um, did a stint supporting battery storage, renewable H2. The last role was it was Siemens Gamesa. Mm-hmm. Um, I was head of uh, sales marketing business development for North America for the onshore business. And then I came to Terra Wolf in June of 2022. And many people ask, you know, why'd you go from energy to Bitcoin mining? Mm-hmm. I don't think the timing was best because as I joined in June and then FTX happened, I think it was November. You're just a masochist. You were yeah. just like, I hate my life anyways. <laughs> I might as well. Siemens, take me back. But yeah, then Bitcoin went down like 16 and then mm-hmm. the banking crisis in March of 23. But now I mean, I'm, I'm extremely happy I, I made the move. Yeah. Um, I, I was kind of looking outside of Siemens at that time. Mm-hmm. I wanted to move into the development space. Mm-hmm. Um, at that time, I was really looking for more renewable developments so doing mm-hmm. wind, solar, like pumped hydro projects, some of that kind of stuff. Um, and the opportunity for Terra Wolf came along and I knew the Terra Wolf folks well, which was a spinoff of Beowulf. Right, right. So Beowulf. Oh, there was another wolf. Uh, there was another wolf. There's a also, cool name too, Beowulf. Wolf. And now we got Wolf Compute and Wolf Labs. I can explain all that in a second. There's a, there's a whole pack here. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's actually, a Wolf Pack. It's, it's actually wolf called the Wolf Pack. When Is I, it really? When oh, I first joined, awesome. the first email I got was "Welcome to the Wolf Pack." Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. so I kind of felt at home. Um, but yeah, where was I? So, <laughs> Sorry, man. So uh, when, when I joined Terra Wolf, over here sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to go into development, and. For this development, it was very unique. Like, mm-hmm. I wanted to go in something more transformational. Um, and I don't think there's a better place than the position I took at TerraWolf. So, mm-hmm. um, like I said, operations development, construction. Um, started out as doing Bitcoin mining. We were repurposing uh, different power plants. So, Beowulf, again, owned five gigawatts of power plants. Bef- and that team was kind of morphed into TerraWolf. Mm-hmm. With that portfolio included two coal plants in upstate New York. It was the last two operating coal plants in New York. Uh, one was Somerset, one was Cayuga, one's near Buffalo, um, and one uh, is near Ithaca, kind of mm-hmm. close to Cornell mm-hmm. uh, University. Um, so we've repurposed the site up in upstate New York, utilize the interconnect into Bitcoin mining. Um, we really jump-started the whole interconnect process. When you hear a lot of projects mm-hmm. saying, hey, we got 500 megawatts we can have online, um, you know, that's, that's a ways out. Yeah. When we talk about our capacity, it's actually there. We're right. utilizing the interconnect from that power plant. We're tapping right into it, getting the interconnect approved. We're actually at 250 right now going to 500 megawatts. We're going to be at 190 megawatts by June. Wow. So we have 310 megawatt pipeline that we're going to build out through artificial intelligence and Bitcoin mining. 
So when I say it's like perfect for why I joined TerraWolf now, I really wanted to get into data. I think Bitcoin was, um, you know, something that I was very, very interested in. Mm -hmm. But now as we look in the digital energy space and now we're diversifying across Bitcoin and artificial intelligence and high performance compute, I think TerraWolf is perfectly positioned as we kind of navigate yeah. going forward, even post uh, post that. Mm -hmm. What yeah. do, do y'all do much on the AI side now or is this a new venture for you guys? So we've been doing a very small AI pilot at okay. Lake Mariner. Mm -hmm. um, again, that was the I, site where Somerset can was. Can you say how small? Yeah, it was just a single A100 server. Oh, okay. Right. Um, and then we had uh, some other, we, we had nine other servers that we were mm -hmm. kind of tinkering around with in the AI space. Mm -hmm. Um, now we're setting up, we already allocated two to three megawatts at the site. We're going through all the, the process right now, doing the double internet, um, redundant power, uh, getting the certain certifications we need to do that AI. We're probably targeting middle summer right now. Um, and we're looking at uh, a full cluster of GPUs, which, nice. uh, when you look at GPUs, you hear the Intel, AMD, mm -hmm. NVIDIA. Um, but if you go the NVIDIA route, that's 1,024 H100 GPUs, which is, it was the latest and greatest until last week until <laughs> NVIDIA announced their next gen, but it's still pretty, Jeez. pretty advanced for, uh, for AI. Moving so, fast. so do you, do you diversify on the existing site? Say, Hey, we're going to say 80% is going to be Bitcoin mining and then 20% is going to be AI or do you just build entirely separate sites, one for Bitcoin mining, and then you build sites for, for AI? It wouldn't be separate sites, it'd be separate buildings. Okay. So as you build a site for Bitcoin mining, um, for Lake Mariner, we have three buildings. They're going to be 25,000 square foot. One's going to be 34,000. Uh, those are really set up for Bitcoin mining because mm -hmm. you have your big racks and then your servers yeah. per the racks. For your artificial intelligence and high-performance compute, that's your you know, standard server racks that you'll mm -hmm. see and you'll hear like, like the 48U, 52U server racks. Mm -hmm. So when you do the, the AI, you're not gonna have the racks that you have for Bitcoin mining. So it really is a purpose-built building. Yeah. But I mean, we're extremely bullish on Bitcoin mining. So I was at site two weeks ago. Um, we're already designing the next building that's mm -hmm. gonna be online, hopefully at the end of this year. And uh, we had key contractors that were sitting in the room and we're very good at building infrastructure, but when you have your electrical, your HVAC, um, and your civil guys, that is their expert traits. We right. brought them in the room and we said, guys, you know, we can write a pretty good bulletproof spec based on lessons learned of what we've been doing, mm -hmm. but let's let you guys optimize. Yeah. So we gave them some pretty rough parameters. <clears throat> it was literally just on one slide and said, here's what we're going to design to. Here's the price target we need to hit. If we hit this, then we're going to do a cookie cutter workshop. And we're going to have modular Bitcoin mining 50 megawatt chunks mm. as we expand to Lake Mariner. I was going to ask, like, what is the operational difference between an AI operation and a Bitcoin one? And also, what are the economic considerations that make you kind of look at one versus the other? Like, it, do you guys put any future value of Bitcoin into your kind of evaluation of it? Yeah, so a lot of the models that we run on Bitcoin... Mm -hmm. We we'll have a certain starting price, and every quarter we do a certain escalation. So I mean, it matters whatever the f flavor of the week is for yeah. what Bitcoin's trading at. Right. Um, to answer your question, just you know, stepping back, the returns are fairly similar. Mm -hmm. Your barrier to entry on the AI side is a lot more, just because the cost per megawatt's a lot more. Mm -hmm. You're looking anywhere from like thirty to forty million per megawatt for AI. Whoa! Because the GPUs are so Dang. incredibly expensive. That is compared wild. to how Bit, much on the Bitcoin, Bitcoin. You're close again. It matters what miner you're going to purchase. Yeah, a million. Um, yeah, I'd say sub a million for yeah. right now. Like so I, right now, our target for future expansion sub five hundred dollars a thirty KW, to forty. Okay. Then your miners on top. So okay. thirty to forty x per megawatt in terms of cost. Yep. But the returns are the same, so it's extremely like lucrative. ROI the is the same. Fairly similar returns. You might be a little more accelerated for AI. Oh really? But. We ran models a month and a half ago when Bitcoin was at 40 yeah. and now it ripped up to 73 and now right. we're hovering right there at 70. Yeah. So right. again, it's very contingent on what Bitcoin and what mm -hmm. those projections. So we do that model. Mm -hmm. We'll do you know, $60,000 starting price post having, and then you can do like a 3% increase month over month. And then we also model what the network hash rate is mm -hmm. going to be, difficulty in transaction fees. And that's yep. what goes in our model to cash forecast this. On the AI side, are you having to go out and like find customers or are you having to like fucking call? Facebook and say, hey, I've got this this fucking new data center, or is there like, are they? can that be taken care of? Well, I mean, good thing is I have Mark Zuckerberg like, on speed dial. So yeah, that's what I figured. Call, right? You just call oh, Zuck up. You've been like, this Yo, little Zuck. island retreat area that he's building right now in Hawaii. 
There's our tinfoil hat stuff. Why are all the billionaires building all these bunkers? We'll get to that though. That's what we need to go. I've I've been curious about the same thing. Uh, That's a pretty wondering. solid rabbit hole. Call Narc and find out, Mr. Zuck. Zuck's yeah. what is what is his nickname? Zuck. Know. Zuck. Yeah. Call him. Let's find out. Yeah. Round two next show. Yeah. I don't know him that well, so yeah. I'm, I'm still on the Mark basis. Oh, Not okay. really the Zuck right. yet, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, for, I mean, for the AI side, I'd say the opportunities are coming out of the woodworks. Yeah. Mm. The, they 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 get word of it and then they're like, fuck. And then I'm guessing they just kind of bid on it probably. Well, there's a huge, uh, there's a huge demand of power. And, yeah. and a lot of these data centers that were built decades ago or mm. even five years ago, yeah. your power density in AI has exponentially increased. So a lot of those data centers, you can't service mm -hmm. to the power density you need nowadays with the infrastructure that exists today. Why do you think that we don't hear much talk about the power draw for AI then? I don't I don't hear it in the same to the same I, level that we do about Bitcoin. Though. I do. You do? Yeah, I think I think it's probably because I just I pay attention to the AI space yeah. a lot. Um, but it's the same thing. It's just a little bit of a different flavor. Mm -hmm. And it seems like there's like tons and tuds of FUD. FUD around yeah. that okay well but, never but, mind. but you're talking about bitcoin mining i mean right that's what we pride ourselves on at lake right. mariner for how we're dispatchable resource mm. yeah right yeah can you talk about that too because we were talking about this briefly before um we started recording but you guys have operations in new york mm -hmm. which a lot of people are you got scared away a couple of years ago two three years ago whenever the initial legislation came out about basically everybody acted like it was a ban on bitcoin i've mm -hmm. talked about it before where i'm like Man, I almost think I would rather go do business in El Salvador than New York um, from a regulatory standpoint. Well, it's, but, it's, it seems that way. Yeah. But then we just talked to Taylor at Clean right. Spark, and, and he was like, we're super happy with our New York yeah. facilities. And, I, and then so I, like maybe I've the had reality word is of different. another deal that some folks were working on in mm -hmm. New York as well. So, yeah, what like your guys, tell, can you talk about the operation in New York a little bit? Yeah, so we're uh, 45 minutes from Buffalo, uh, very, very close to Niagara Falls. Mm-hmm. So the line coming off Niagara Falls, going down to the, to the heavy load pocket, which is more New York City, um, we're right there in that transmission line. Mm -hmm. So at that facility, it's a very unloaded line. So by actually having a load near where the generation's produced, it actually has voltage support and has a lot of benefits to mm -hmm. the transmission line. But when there's any times in our zone, we're in NISO zone A, mm -hmm. or just NISO as a whole, anytime there's a high demand or if the grid is stressed, we come off. Right. So there's been certain times where we've been asked early on before we now have a nice scaled down dispatch. Mm -hmm. Now we come down in five minutes. Mm -hmm. But at the start, when we were doing ancillary service, we we're taking the whole ship down in seconds. Really? So we could go from 100 megawatts down to nothing if we were called upon by the grid to support mm -hmm. that grid stress. Yeah. And we would do that often. So, I mean, we actually look at ourselves as, I mean, we're using stranded energy, low dollar energy, sustainable mm -hmm sustainable energy, mm -hmm. but we're also grid support. We're keeping right. that line, the voltage up. and So it seems like across the board, I mean, right. we, we know the most about ERCOT just because we we play here, Absolutely. but it seems like across the board with all the various grids, pretty much everybody's coming around to these demand response programs mm -hmm. and needs the same thing. Is it, so in, in ERCOT, I think there's like eight different programs. Is there is there eight there? Is there one or how does that work? We're, we participate in three programs. Okay, It's very, very similar to like demand response, which you're familiar with. Yeah. Um, or an operating reserve. Uh, I don't know how many total are available in New York. I just know that we do participate in three. There's four. There's one additional one we're looking at. Mm. So there might be four in the near term. Right now we participate mm. in those three. Okay. Yeah, that, I mean, that is the same story around the country. You know, we do, we do talk about ERCOT a lot and the unregulated kind of, you know, market that we live in. The ability, I think the biggest distinguishing factor is the ability to sell power back to the grid, like actually Absolutely. selling it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the whole narrative around uh, Bitcoin acting as kind of a support for utilities and a balancing, you know, uh, operation or, or uh, whatever you want to call it, that is a story that seems to be getting a lot more traction. I think kind of being accepted more universally than what mm -hmm. it was over the past couple mm -hmm. of years. So that's a good thing, obviously, because it's not, it's not narrative or rhetoric. It's, it's literally true. And I think Texas, like TBC has some great stats that they can show oh, yeah. to, to back up like the reality of Bitcoin miners do turn down. I'm sure you guys have the same to be able to show that in New York. It's just, mm -hmm. a, it's good that we actively go out and combat those narratives because 
you know, oil and gas, we got behind the eight ball, I feel like over the past 20 years where we didn't fight it or take it seriously enough and just kind of ignored it. And it, it got it gained mm. some steam and got away from us. So definitely don't want to see that happen in Bitcoin. I mean, that's why we also want to talk. And again, I know this is more focused on mm -hmm. Bitcoin. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> right now we are almost all Bitcoin. Yeah. But when we talk digital energy and you look at the U.S. trying to push new renewable projects, mm -hmm. when you have a second revenue stream for these renewable projects, right. it's a lot easier to bank these projects Yeah. when you have absolutely. that second revenue. Stream. So we're talking to a lot of renewable developers right now um, all over the U.S., even in projects in like that Eastern MISO, which you already have a lot of curtailment. Really tough to develop a project that already has curtailment. But if you put a wind project there, you have your PPA with the with the grid, mm -hmm. or you can actually do like a merchant forward on the um, on the forward projections of the energy price. But if you can also say that if any time you have Bitcoin as a hedge, or any time the energy is below a certain dollar per megawatt hour, we're going to go to the Bitcoin mine instead of the grid, mm -hmm. or you have that buffer to make sure you're never curtailing energy. You can start banking renewable projects and driving a lot right. of the financials forward to really hit these IRA goals that were pushed under the Biden administration. Right. And I think under, uh, you know, you, you mentioned too, you guys are, will look internationally at projects. Correct. That's another area where I, I've constantly talked about, we've constantly talked about. Um, there's so much growth potential to me there because it is, like you said, it's a buyer that can come in and basically be a customer where you don't even have customers yet, allow you to kind of expand opportunities in areas that don't have power served to yeah. the population. And yes, you it's kind of a chicken or egg issue of why there's not some of those projects now. This is one of those Bitcoin fixes that kind of comments, but it, it does, it really does. So um, yeah, man, I mean, I think we're all on board with what you're saying. And um, another thing that I've talked about repeatedly in here has been a conversation I had with a guy, a nuclear engineer in Dubai uh, from last year, when he told me they would mine Bitcoin if Bitcoin was at zero because of its kind of safety factors that it creates when you're bringing a nuclear facility down. And you guys being one of the, I think one of the only miners in the US that's on a large scale mining mm -hmm. on nuclear. Correct. What what were those, and I don't know if you were over there when they when they started those conversations, but how what's your, how did that go when that first kind of came to fruition of like hey we're wanting to come set up this bitcoin mine on these nuclear facilities what what was the reaction from the nuclear group yeah so i, I guess just because I, I didn't really answer your full question on oh, terror yeah, wolves bad. yeah so yeah. we have uh lake mariner then mm -hmm. the nautilus the nautilus facilities behind the meter for the nuclear um that's in berwick pennsylvania it's a jv with talon mm -hmm. so it's a 25 75 jv it's behind the meter at their 2.5 gigawatt Susquehanna nuclear facility. We really selected that facility because you have two completely identical units mm -hmm. at that site. So each one's like 1.25 gigawatts. Um, and there's a separate substation attached to each one of those units. And we have a separate transmission line that mm -hmm. goes to the Nautilus facility. So anytime they're refueling or doing an outage, any kind of service or have a forced outage, which is pretty rare in the nuclear mm -hmm. space, mm -hmm. um, you can switch over so your uptime theoretically, should be almost 100%. Right. So that's why that facility was first targeted. Um, at that time, and again, it was before my time for the development, I joined mm -hmm. during the construction of it. Um, were the 200 megawatts on the Cumulus campus? So Cumulus campus overall is like 900, 950 megawatts. We were doing the crypto side, which was 200 to start with, and then expansion capability. Each one of us in Talon mm -hmm. each have the ability to expand 50 megawatts. So Nautilus could be 300. Mm -hmm. The rest of the Cumulus campus, actually Amazon just purchased that from Cumulus, oh, right. I think three weeks ago. Wow. Um, so they'll be- you your, know, your neighbor. Our very close neighbor yeah, at that facility. Right. Um, say, say hi to Bezos for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, you're going to be hanging out. I'm still on Jeff. Zuck I'm still Bezos talking Jeff. Shit, and I, yeah. I guess Bezos and us. Uh, uh, yeah. Man, we do need to call him when everything goes to shit. We'll go hang out with the bunkers with all the other billionaires. <laughs> but the power price of that facility, it's two cent power. Uh -huh. um, that's going to be pretty tough to get now yeah. going forward on a nuclear site. Because mm. within the IRA that the federal government's pushing, there's a certain floor price. Um, like a kind of a safety factor mm -hmm. for a floor to keep these nuclear sites operating and not shutting off. Right. Um, and keeping them at a base load. And we're 
we're below what that what that rate is. Mm-hmm. We got a fantastic energy rate there. It's a five year PPA at the two cent. Um, but at the time when you're looking at these nuclear facilities, y- you want to have a floor position mm-hmm. for a nuke site. You mm-hmm. always want to keep that nuke site up and running. The higher you can keep usually a thermal power plant, the more efficient it is. Mm-hmm. So even a gas site, a coal site, or a nuke site, the higher you are to that nameplate capacity, the more right. efficient you are. So the more you can buffer that min load, the better off that unit's going to run, mm-hmm. the less cycling it's going to do. And yeah, they just- So they were the excited about it probably. Absolutely. Yeah, they look at it. How much generation does that nuke set have? 2.5 Giga- gigawatts. gigawatts. Okay. So it's huge. Yeah, that's yeah, sounds like back what to is the, the Do you know what the, the biggest nuclear site in the U.S. is? I should know that. I, um, I'm just trying to give me some context. And so like 2.5, I know that's big, mm-hmm. right? But most of your nuke sites are going to be north of a gig. Okay. Uh, th- th- there's still nuke sites uh, in operation. I think uh, the one in New York that mm-hmm. was commissioned, I want to say in the late 60s, that one's still in operation. Yeah, most of your, most of your nuke sites are going to mm-hmm. be either one or two units. It'll be north of a gig. Wow. Love fucking power. Have, has there been much, because we haven't really had a whole lot of new nuke sites built in the U.S. in a while, right? The most recent one was Vogel, so that's in mm-hmm. Georgia mm-hmm. by uh, Georgia that? Power. That was actually commissioned. So there's two, there's four units at that site. Unit three was, I want to say, commissioned last year. Oh, Unit wow. four is mm-hmm. still in the final stages of construction. Are those, was that an existing nuke facility previously, Correct. right? So, Correct. The, the, so, so as it's far my understanding they've only issued one new permit for an entirely new nuclear facility since the 70s. But that's also the problem. When you look mm-hmm. at, and we actually had a good discussion on nuclear energy on building new power plants a few months ago, and we were looking at SMRs. Mm-hmm. The technology for an SMR and the construction is not the long tentpole. It's all the compliance and certifications really? and the hoops you have to go through with I wanted to ask you about that too, because like I've heard about that stuff kind of going on, but it to me it seems like why are, have these not been spun up? But that's it's a regulatory. It's, it's the NIMBYs, man. Uh, nobody nobody yeah. wants the nobody wants it in their backyard. But the, what's crazy about that is like if nuclear was invented today, we would all throw our hands up in the air and say this is the greatest thing ever invented. Mm-hmm. Like we have mm-hmm. solved energy crisis, like bar none. But the yeah. fact that these were built. At the same time that like cars in the 60s and 70s were built, like that's the right. technology that was compared to. And then we had a few accidents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. It's, it's that it ruined those... it for everybody very, very yeah. quickly. Instead of it being like, could you imagine if we we're building a brand new facility nowadays? And like, yeah. What's crazy the... to me is that, like, especially this administration mm-hmm. and how, like, quote unquote, clean that they mm-hmm. want to go, the fact that you're not like bending over backwards and incentivizing it through things like the IRA right. to facilitate more nuclear than ever mm-hmm. is talking out both sides of your mouth. Oh, completely. You look at California when they, last uh, winter, or last summer, I'm sorry, um, they literally, they're like, you know, we're going all EV. And then I remember reading a story about how the they were changing the regulations and want to be completely EV vehicle like vehicles for everyone mm-hmm. and then it was like the next story was literally about how they had to ask everybody to not charge their cars because it was too big of a strain on the grid it's like good grief what what are you talking about this yeah. is insane so like they should be building some nuclear facilities out in california yeah like, but there, there is policy I mean, so the investment tax credit there is policy for new nuclear reactors to be built but are they full size or are they modular most well it, it matters um there's a larger test project that's being done in Wyoming right now. Okay. I think it's Terra Power. Hmm. Um, there's a lot of modular companies out there. They're probably 50 megawatt blocks. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, again, back to the bankability. Yeah. Like you're going to build this nuclear site. You're Who's probably going you, to be delayed, not on the construction side. It's more just a policy and mm-hmm. getting all of your certifications and all yeah. the approvals in place. So it could be a five. It could be a 10-year build. So I think that's what's really tough to finance these projects right. to go forward. Um, the technology is definitely there. I mean, the, yeah. the U.S. Yeah. Navy's using right. when their aircraft carriers and their subs. Yeah, very yeah, no very kidding. similar technology. Yeah, yeah. There, there was one that I ran past. Uh, I did my like beach runs when I was mm. in California. There was a nuclear facility right there on the beach that we used to run past really? every single day. Yep. I think Miami. I is yeah. in Miami is like pretty heavy nuclear uh, production for the well, Florida Power and Lights got a lot right. of nukes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's actually a guy on Twitter. Um, 
nuclear bitcoiner i think is what it is uh he he's a sharp guy he's canadian um i need to get him on the show at some point but he works for some think tank up there and and he's really been trying to push a lot of kind of the bitcoiner and nuclear mm -hmm. kind of are y'all the technology only ones together. at this scale that are mining a bitcoin in the nuclear? u.s yes yeah. okay yeah, is there some internationally that you know of that are i don't know about 200 megawatts but i do mm -hmm. know there's there is some bitcoin mining yeah. for some nuclear sites yeah when you guys are looking for your next project um is that what you kind of what would be your preference if you could pick energy supply would it be nuclear or? Well, we're looking at all aspects we're looking um from a renewable side curtail power mm -hmm. so we're looking for like i said that eastern miso area there's some projects in canada yeah. center part of canada we're looking at so any project has heavy curtailments a good site for crypto mm -hmm. Uh, again, because it's dispatchable. You don't need to be on 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. Like some of the projects we're modeling right now, the data center is online 50, 60% of the time. Mm -hmm. Other than that, power is going to the grid. Mm -hmm. Only time it's going to the mining center is when it's below a certain strike price from an energy perspective mm -hmm. or when there's heavy curtailment coming from that renewable site. Mm -hmm. yep. So we're looking at hydro, we're looking at wind, solar. I heard hydro is um, expensive. Matters where it is. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess so. If you have stranded hydro, yeah. And there's certain places outside yeah. of the U.S. I'm not going to say the country that we're yeah. looking heavily at, <laughs> but there are some countries out there that overbuild hydro, multiple mm. countries, and it's it's yeah. stranded power. Yeah. So when we talk about digital energy, it's stranded power, and we're actually monetizing it in digital energy. If it's Bitcoin mining as an AI, it's still Par digital Paraguay? energy. Paraguay? It's not Paraguay. Uruguay? Uruguay? Are we going through the guessing game? <laughs> How many countries are we going to go through? Maybe. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. There, I mean, I'm You're just, the wrong continent. Let's yeah, give you okay, that. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. I wonder yeah. who's going to be the first to mine off geothermal. I don't know. I think there's a lot of geothermal sites in California. So when yeah. I worked for Siemens, we had an arm turbo care and they did a lot of the service for geothermals. Mm -hmm. Again, if you find a geothermal site mm -hmm. that they're having stranded power or having transmission constraints, it's a perfect project for Bitcoin right. mining. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the key is looking for constraint issues, right? And yeah. Yeah, like generation and can I get it to market? If you can't, it was perfect. Bitcoin mining is perfect thing. And you're also talking about, I mean, I mean, nuclear, we also need a lot of transmission improvements in the yeah. US. A lot of the transmission grid in the US is past its design life. Uh, yeah. You know, it matters who you talk to, but I've heard numbers. If you consider a design life of 35, 40 years, then almost 50% of the US grid is behind its design life, which is pretty scary. That is scary. So when you're looking at building these new transmission lines, you've got to build these transmission lines for the absolute peak that you might right. have once every 10 years. Right. So by having that, that, that one peak that might happen 10 minutes per year mm -hmm. or 10 minutes per decade, when you have Bitcoin mining or another offtake at the end of that transmission right. line it makes to bring up that minimum load, to bring up that buffer, so you're actually having something to sell that energy to mm -hmm. at a at a higher rate more of the time. It makes complete sense. That's the thing people don't understand, though. You yeah. know what I mean? Like this is the same conversation every time. It's like, how do you get everybody to understand this? Mm -hmm. Like I just I don't get it. And I I understand that power is complicated and like nobody is. If you're not working in it, you're not thinking about it. All you hear is like Bitcoin miners use a lot of power. They're bad. I had a blackout. And it's like, oh, it's their fault. But actually, you would probably have less blackouts if we were online because we do have a base load that's up here. And you got to go through that whole scenario, but the song and dance, but they don't understand it. And so, yeah, it's a difficult, it's going to be a long But long it's educating people on power. Like, yeah. When right. I first worked for Siemens, I started this program. It was a rotational program. Mm -hmm. It was like, like a glorified intern. Yeah. But you rotated through four different business groups in 14 months. Mm -hmm. And you had to do a skit for the national oh, really? uh, sales meeting. Yeah. And we went around and we were, uh, I forget what talk show we were kind of basing it off of, but we were asking people around Orlando, you know, how, where does energy come from? <coughs> and the vast majority of people are like, I don't know, I go in the corner of my house and I, <laughs> I, I hit a light switch. Right, and it just comes and on. And just the basic knowledge, when you ask about why nuclear is not going forward, why Bitcoin's not getting adopted more, mm. it's people need to understand energy. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think and that's People the make key. decisions blind. Right, That the key is, and even, it's almost we've talked about this with like Brent and Matt avoiding the conversation about Bitcoin. Like it's more energy. If you can talk to them about energy and get them to understand that, mm -hmm. Bitcoin, it, the mining aspect makes total sense. It's like, oh, okay, wait. So they're getting paid in Bitcoin 
to get power to people who don't have it or make power more reliable for the people who do. Oh, okay. Like it's, it's, a, it's an easier conversation, saying. especially yeah. for like oil and gas guys. Yeah. Just completely leave that out. And it's just yeah. like, yeah, we're just going to pay you for it. Oh, I, pay I, for I, your. I had a conversation with the oil and gas company today about this very thing. And it was like, we hardly talked about Bitcoin at all. Like it was literally just like monetizing their gas and that's it. And so, yeah, yeah. It, it'll be that that's the direction I think you have to go. Yeah. I think it is. So it's education. Yeah, it is, man. Yeah, I thought we were talking about fishing and hunting today. Oh, yeah, we need to do that, too. <laughs> I, can we pull up a picture can we, when we make the the episode yeah. of yeah. my fish? I'm yeah. going to send them to you. Yeah. You're really proud of this fish. I'm very proud. Well, that's one of them. I, we caught 300 in two days. I want to know if he uh, stepped on it because I have a picture I can show you. Mine's 43. You said uh, yours is 44. Yeah. You got some more girth on yours. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to see it. who's leaning on yeah, to get right. that extra you, inch. You, you, well, and, well, I've gotten really good at like how to frame a picture. You know, you know how girls will, they get the Instagram poses. That's not where I thought you were going with yeah. this. You're like, I knew how to frame up the picture. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I got to. I mean, I, no wonder you're kicked off Instagram. All right. Yeah. No <laughs> I've got the angles. There's, a, there's some angles that will make it look bigger. We're talking about fish right you gotta now. You got to use a fish eye lens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh I know what you're talking about. You, you, you yes, put that in front of the camera. Yes. There you go. But yeah. you, I'll save you on that one. Keeping your elbows in closer, right? And you keep yeah. your elbows in closer. You faint, if, and you try to... <laughs> man, I, can't, I can't even say what I want to say. You show no. small fingers. You got to show little yeah. spear fingers. Yeah, yeah, spear fingers, right? You got to <laughs> elbows in, spear fingers out. Yeah. Fish close, you know, and you yeah. lean back a little bit. Yeah. yeah it's it's all, uh, you know, it's part of the, part of the game. Here. So, <laughs> man, I'm... <laughs> This could have went real <laughs> south. I took my fingers and poses and all I this know. stuff. I'm going to stop. <laughs> I'm glad we don't have an HR department. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so sorry. Thanks, Sean. I'm blaming that on you. Man. That was my but yes, fault. big hunting and fishing. You Being in Colorado, you get an elk hunt much? I do. Uh, last year, I didn't go because where my tag was, it was really high up north mm. or, or high elevation. Yeah. So we didn't get enough snow early on, so they didn't come down. My tag was all the way till January 15th. Oh, wow. But if you get early snow where I hunt, it's usually good. Yeah. Uh, if you get late snow, it's not a good hunt. Okay. Um, I am trying to, next year, I want to get it to go on my first elk hunt. So that'd be sick. Yeah, that's something I want to do. Are you going to stalk it? I mean, that's kind of you, you have gonna, to, right? Right. I mean, you guys live in Texas. You, there's, yeah. a, there's probably a high fence place here. There probably 10 is a high fence down the road. Shoot, and I don't want to do it's that. It's like shooting one in a you zoo. Know, <laughs> I've heard they started having them in, they, there's an elk season in uh, Missouri now, but I think it's, it's very super select because they started having some show up back The place there. that I go, we do it for, we go dove hunting there and it's like, a, it's kind of like a luxury way yeah. of doing it. It's like really nice. Um, but they have all sorts of exotic game and yeah. they, have, they have elk. And where you stay, it's on the second floor of like this gigantic barn dominium and there's a deck. And one of the guys there was like, I want to spear the elk in the back. And so they lured this what? elk up to yeah. the resort and he's on the second deck and just takes this gigantic like ancient oh spear gosh, and spears this thing in the back and kills it though. Jeez. That was Jared Allen from the Vikings. He, I don't think it was an elk, oh, it was a deer. Yeah. He was in a deer stand and yeah. he threw like a javelin down. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. how primal is that? Dude, that's some pretty primal. Well, except for the whole part of it, you're like having somebody walk it up to you so you can jump off the deck. I don't think they walked it up. I mean, <laughs> like, they had to like lure hey, it in like food or right something. Here it is right here. Got a little bit of corn down there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I wanted to do it for a long time. My grandpa, my uncles out in Oregon, they were all big elk hunters. I just want to eat some because I see Joe Rogan eating oh, every day. It's delicious. Oh, elk, it's elk like so the, good. Yeah, it's so lean. I've got two elk steaks in my freezer right now. I've never had elk. Man, that's delicious. It's it is probably one of my favorite. Hopefully, it tastes venison. better than venison. Yeah. Well, again, it matters where you're shooting your venison. Yeah. Like if if you get a good like Kansas corn fed whitetail, mm -hmm. it's delicious. If you get like yeah, a, never had a Eastern Kansas Texas tail. eating twigs <laughs> and acorns, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm used yeah. to. It might yeah. be a little, it tastes it like might a, be a little sagey. Yeah, yeah. It, it tastes like acorns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it right. might, might taste like incense. <laughs> 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 it's true yeah no the missouri deer i'm gonna forget kansas missouri deer but, but and i just remember you asked market. me the question earlier about uh, uh nuclear sites in the u.s yeah. 54 i wasn't too far off 54 percent of our uh, no no, no. 54 nuke plants are still oh, operating in the okay. u.s that's still pretty good that's, yeah, that's more than i thought but it'd be nice for us to get some new ones you mm -hmm. know what i mean and i don't it'd be better off for everybody i think everybody's cost of power would 
would go down and it'd be probably the most reliable form we mm-hmm. could have right now. So, um, but yeah, I mean, from a safety aspect, Bitcoin mining and nuclear kind of go, they go together like peas and carrots. Absolutely. Professor Corn would say. So, yeah. Well, look, man, I, I've really enjoyed this. Um, I think that you guys are, are kind of leading the way on mm-hmm. the nuclear side. I told you I've, I've been following you guys for a little while um just kind of watching what's going on uh in fact terra wolf was was the first exposure i had got to another mining company really back when i started jay it was in wyoming okay. and um so you know we talked with some people i can't remember his name i have to go look at my email but um those were some of the first conversations i had with a ni- another mining company obviously he was way like different scale. i want to be a part of the wolf pack right i, I gotta begging. start a mining company you're like no nah, we're not interested i haven't even told you about beowulf nova wolf, oh, well, tell us wolf about compute them. we don't have to end just tell it. yeah oh there's that rabbit hole you're going for um <laughs> Tim Fool, had them? yeah so right. so beowulf was uh from acquisition development mm-hmm. operation uh, that was like the five gigawatts of power plants. Yeah. Um, 20 plus power plants throughout the world, not mm-hmm. just in the US. Um, so that's still on the private side. And we have about 100 people on Beowulf that we have IT, accounting, mm-hmm. finance, HR, engineering. So you still have that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So All I manage right. the operations on Beowulf. That's uh-huh. the boots on the ground that mm-hmm. you know, operate the sites. Yeah. Um, and then there's the accounting team that's also mm-hmm. within Beowulf. Terra Wolf is the public arm that's on the NASDAQ, which you guys know very, very well. Um, Wolf Compute is our AI arm that is going to be doing the development at Lake Mariner, that two mm-hmm. megawatt pilot I was talking about. Wolf Labs is on the Beowulf side that we still do some just future generation. Like they, they were testing yeah. our weave um, and some other technologies we're testing on the Wolf Lab side. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, so it's still a, the full lab today. There's you can test miners, you can test GPUs, um, anything for digital energy. Yeah. That's kind of on the private side. We can still do the testing. Um, and then Nova Wolf was uh, kind of the hedge fund side, um, uh, and that was probably the last wolf that I mentioned. I think that's the five <laughs> wolves. That's probably enough to confuse that's you a for solid today. Fact though, right? Yeah, we can get I, you a pretty good, say, pretty good work chart, chart for that. Yeah. yeah. Totally yeah. need one. It's more like a flow chart entity chart when yeah. they all came into play. Right. Yeah. So what's the next steps then? I think like are you guys gonna just try to continue to expand in the U.S. or you did mention overseas, but is so there both. a focus one or more than the other? I'd say U.S. and, and overseas. So Nautilus, we already put in our fifty megawatt mm-hmm. expansion. Again, that has to be crypto mining. Um, we use Bitcoin here, just FYI. Yeah, we use Bitcoin. Bitcoin we, mining. We'll, we, that's we'll we'll be bleep the word. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 We're all maxis around here, sorry. <laughs> so at Nautilus, we put in our 50 yeah. megawatt expansion, which is uh-huh. going to be Bitcoin mining. Right. Uh, for Lake Mariner, uh, as I mentioned, that's 190 megawatts. We're going to be mm-hmm. at probably June timeframe. Mm-hmm. So the 310 megawatts of available capacity there, that'll be probably majority Bitcoin mining. Nice. There's another site that I mentioned earlier that's in upstate New York near uh, Cayuga Lake. That's got about 250 megawatts. Um Forgot that, to mention our 250 megawatts. <laughs> yeah. also, so little guy. Also, also had a 245 million gallon per day take permit at a uh, Cayuga Lake. Wow. So as you're looking at some next gen cooling, yeah. these sites that are all coal plants are mm-hmm. very, very well positioned for digital energy and Bitcoin mining. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we're also looking outside the U.S. and in the U.S. So mm. um, through a lot of the developers I knew at Siemens Gamesa. Um, we're talking to them both to make projects, bring them across the finish line, bring on more renewable energy in the U.S. to hit mm-hmm. a lot of the renewable targets that we have in the zero carbon energy. So both on development side, also there's a lot of sites that are not hitting their financial returns, either mm-hmm. from curtailment <clears throat> or the grid price just isn't there what they thought it was going to be. Right. So we're really attacking that space pretty mm-hmm. hard. Um, and then outside the U.S., yeah, we're looking at hydro and right. cheap grid power there, there are certain areas outside the u.s where they did overbuild right and there's very very low energy mm-hmm. uh, energy price mm-hmm. um again that just comes into the you know question of how long can you forecast energy right. from a merchant perspective and that's what we're doing right now but we got some guys in new york that are crunching some numbers seeing where the next move is what about um uh, with the having coming up are you guys kind of want to keep some dry powder somewhere to maybe take down some acquisitions of some groups that might be 
closing up shop or getting in some trouble financially? We are keeping dry powder leading up. I think the last I heard was uh, April 19th. Mm -hmm. Um, we're still going to be mining uh, dollar per coin, uh, like sub 40000 all in. That's nice. energy costs. That's fully loaded. That's the shared services from Beowulf, E&D. Right. Uh, so that's a fully loaded cost. Mm -hmm. I mean, the number I heard was like closer to 37000 So we feel like we're very, very well positioned. Yeah. Um, we're getting close to 25 joules per terahash on mm -hmm. our whole entire fleet um, with the miners that we just have coming in. Then we're going to populate that next building that mm -hmm. I mentioned in June. Mm -hmm. So our efficiency's there. Our power cost is sub four cents. Yeah. So do, do we need a huge arsenal of dry powder? I'd say no, but are we mm -hmm. keeping, mm -hmm. are, are, are we loaded going into the having? Right. Yes, but yeah. I think we're very, very well positioned going forward. Right, yeah, no, I think that, um, I think that there's some groups that are gonna be uh, coming offline, but any drop in difficulty, I'm, I'm, I think it's gonna be short lived. Cause like, yeah. there's a lot of big groups. They got some serious high powered machines coming online and, yeah, we we'll probably see a little dip for a little bit, but I don't I don't see a long dip. I saw Luxor. This is probably three weeks ago. This so might be a little mm -hmm. bit outdated. They were sitting between like seventy five and one twenty five was coming offline. Right. But as you said, they were buying these T twenty ones, S twenty ones, the the new micro BT M sixties, mm -hmm. and like Oridine. That's another uh, that's another miner that we've been evaluating. Mm -hmm. With these new miners coming out in the market, I have a feeling yeah, it's gonna yeah, I do too. You're gonna see a nice ramp up at the end of the year, right? I do too. Hopefully, that's an indication that price keeps ripping. That'd be pretty. Solid. We've got a uh, Oridine CEO coming on the show soon. Oh, nice. Yeah, good. R Rajiv, mm -hmm. good guy. Wait, I met with him last week. Oh, really? It seems it seems promising. I I know Marshall ran is is or is testing running one of theirs right. compared to some I think micro BT stuff. Yeah, the micro BTs. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of curious to see how it plays out. They have a really good technology. They're uh, I think their miner they just announced is 250 terahash per block. Mm -hmm. They're sub 17 and a half joules per per wow. uh, joules per terahash uh, for efficiency. That's heard, really good. I've heard that it, the actual is 14. What? That's just what I heard fucking through though. We're Remember testing now. their four nanometer right now. So it's the gen that's available now. That okay. three nanometer I think's coming out like mid summer, mm -hmm. late summer. Um, but yeah, if the performance hits some of the numbers that they're marketing, that's gonna be a next generation miner. Right. So when you have miners like that, it's yeah, uh, almost anybody can be profitable as long as you can afford it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that that's what's so crazy. I remember four years ago, people were like Oh, we're going to level off on the machines, which I even thought too. We're going to level <coughs> off on the technological improvements and the speed. And it's like, no, nope, this is just freaking skyrocketing. So when there's that much reward potential, obviously, like people are going to find a way to make things work. So like, just think about the efficiency since I, I've been here two years. Yeah. Yeah. I just think of the crazy stuff. We had miners that are north of 30 joules per tera ash. Right. Now, now we're talking 14. Yeah. Now 17? we're not touching anything unless you're in the mid to low teens. Yeah, that's Future. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, two years. Imagine what it'll be in two more years. Mm -hmm. Man, I bet there'll be some people talking about it in Power tomorrow. Yeah, I bet there will be. Right. By the time this goes out, in Power will already happen. I know, so. so yeah, that's true. But I'm excited. It's gonna be good. Who do you guys do your legal work with? Uh, mostly in house. You need to call. You need to call firm 21M. I was waiting for the sales oh, so, pitch. Yeah, yeah. Here calls. we go. Give That's us a why shout. I'm here. We we got we got <laughs> all experienced attorneys there from the Bitcoin mining world, and we need call we need to talk to you guys from Adcom perspective. See if maybe there's some stuff we could do together. Absolutely. So yeah, so Chloe will be there tomorrow. She's our uh, communication. Mm -hmm. uh, she'll be a good person to make contact with. Cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll I'll find you. We'll connect and yeah. hook us up. In some introductions. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, thank you, Sean. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. This is good. This is really good. Appreciate you letting us bounce around and yeah, of course. On topic, we'll some, off topic, let's it was some good. Hunting trips and fishing trips together. So, yeah. Now we're talking. That's what we need to do. That'd be a lot better podcast. Yes, background. it would. It'd be what, right oh, there, rainy so lake, bald fun. eagles in the background. Yeah. That'd be yes. nice. Have you ever seen the Texas Lawhawk commercial? Yeah. On YouTube? <laughs> This is Lawhawk. Yes, I want to make some of those. Yeah. So, yeah, we need some backdrop like that. God, I spent way too much time watching those videos. Oh, they're, they're hilarious. hilarious, man. You ever seen them? No. All right, we're going to send All right, you some. Go, yeah. go Google yeah. some of those. This is my YouTube tonight in a hotel room. <laughs> like and subscribe. We'll catch you guys in the next episode.